very much. Um, I should just say, this is, this is my entourage, really. Um, this is Tilly, and this is Cliff. And uh, they're mainly just here for moral support for me. Um, and I'm going to do a poem about them. Um, it's my, my third poem. They were made by Lal Hitchcock, uh, entirely from Flotsam and Jetsam, uh, washed up on the high tide line of the Jurassic Coast, not so very far from here. Um, and I'll get back to them. It's just nice to have them. Um, oh, oops, sorry, excuse me. I'll leave that there. I'll crack on. We'll get to Tilly and Cliff in a bit. When I was a kid, I dreamed about what I'd be when I was big and I was grown up. And um, I was given a rhyme. You, you, all, you all know the rhyme about what you're going to be when you grow up. Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. You know that? It's okay to say yes? yes. Does anyone know how it goes on? Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Yeah, you can say it out loud, it's okay. Doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. Some of you didn't know that, did you? That's why you don't have better jobs. <laughs> Your expectations were constrained. You were limited by the rhymes you were given, okay? It's really important. Doctor, lawyer opens up the possibility of the professions, okay? Indian chief suggests a management role. <laughs> or, if, like me, you're from the Totnes area, perhaps a shamanic path. Okay, so, <laughs> thank you. I've updated it to allow more possibilities. I've updated it for the 21st century and I've called it the prune stone oracle. Because as a kid, as a kid we did it with prune stones, we did it with apricot stones. I still do it, but these days I use olive stones. <laughs> okay, the prune stone oracle. Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, affluent, effluent, banker man, brief, drinker, abstainer, personal trainer, rich man, pure man, beauty, beast, actor, voyeur, pagan, priest, starlet, stylist, pilot, harlot, bright spark, damp squib, top dog, dipstick, washer up, usherette, husher up, shrink, chiropractor, astronaut, pimp. Bull girl, cold collar, wide boy, curb crawler, high flyer, fall guy, poor cow, small fry, bricklayer, soothsayer, darts player, social worker, statistician, dietitian, fat controller. <laughs> somebody, nobody, nobody, somebody, pen pusher, wage slave, cannon fodder, dog's body, magistrate, agitator, high street, prestidigitator, conjurer, registrar, hedge fund manager, <laughs> farmer, palmist, media whore. Elvis impersonator, Ofsted inspector. Elvis impersonator, Ofsted inspector. <laughs> Off-white van man, funeral director, busker, wrestler, condom tester. <laughs> Dowser, rustler, behaviorist, geek. Jogger jihadist, digital artist, analyst, activist, offshore exorcist. Anabolic sports star, bar star, fraudster, butler, bouncer, burglar, minder, monkey trainer, organ grinder. Chicken pucker puffer up a pillow for blood sucker. <laughs> Chicken pucker puffer up a pillow for blood sucker. <laughs> Compare, umpire, au pair, vampire. <laughs> Shadow spokesman. <laughs> Identity thief. Doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So that was a sort of a little swatch of possibilities, a kind of um, seed, packet of uh, seed dreams, that's how I think of it. And I'd be grateful if you could all learn it off by heart and teach it to your kids. <laughs> so that's a pledge then. <laughs> okay, the thing is, people, uh, we, we grow up, we get, we get these jobs, and uh, often when we go into the world of work, there's a gap between our dreams and the reality we find in, the, in a place of work. And we, sometimes it's a gap, sometimes it's a chasm. You know, it, it works differently for different people. And we try to plug this gap, it's inevitable, we try to plug this gap with, with the perks that come with whatever job we've had. And this, this next post, it's kind of as close to gritty reality as I get. Um, this poem's called Works Perks. And it's for anyone and everyone in the room who at some point in their working life has taken something home from work and there were, you know, there were loads of these things around, no one was really going to miss it, and you kind of felt entitled to it, and in, in a way you kind of were. <laughs> but you never brought it back, did you? And in a, in a, from a very strict legal perspective, perhaps it could be construed as theft. <laughs> so let's just have a quick show of hands for people for whom that's true. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it. quite an ethical audience, it's quite difficult. Oh no, thank you. A Mexican wave of honesty, a lot of, yeah, thank you, that's, I think that's most of us here. Works, 
perks. It's just a little thing. I wouldn't call it pilfering or petty theft. I took one, yes, but look, there are so many left. I'm in on time, I smile, work hard. Why should my conscience twitch or flinch? Each working week you take a yard, so why begrudge me my half inch? You take the best hours of my day, what do you give me? Take home pay. I'm so tired I can hardly speak. You take the best days of my week, you take the best weeks of my month. I take some paper, this hole punch. <laughs> you take the best months of my year. I take this swivel chair, oh dear. <laughs> You take the best years of my life, a laminator for the wife. <laughs> so now, please look the other way. I need my little takeaway to give myself a token raise to supplement my take-home praise. Some get to meet celebrities or go on junkets overseas. I'm simply taking some of these, some paper clips, some folder files, Brit stick, stapler, carpet tiles. <laughs> some Tipex, a waste paper bin, this thing for putting thingies in, this ream. Okay, this box of reams. <laughs> this laptop. Well, you took my dreams. How did it ever come to this? My perky, chirpy perquisites have been turned into exhibits. These trinkets I gave house room to. Exhibits A to W. Don't ask what reason or what rhyme drove pretty me to petty crime. Nobody's perfect. I guess it built up over time. Because I'm worth it. Thank you. Thank you. If, if we actually were in Top Nest right now, what we'd do is we'd, we'd go around the room and the people who'd have their hands up would say their name and then maybe their star sign <laughs> and, uh, and tell us what they'd taken home from work and we'd all, you know, we'd all understand and, 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 uh, and not judge and it would be lovely. But we haven't got time, I've got to crack on. <laughs> And I promised, I promised to do the, the love poem. It's, it's a love poem between Tilly and Cliff. Now, Lal Hitchcock made them. It was for a Jurassic Journey uh, project with Ben Osborne, Sammy Hurd. We went out for a photo shoot with, with, with Tilly and Cliff, and everybody wanted to talk to us, and everybody uh, wanted to have their picture taken with them, and they wanted to know the story. Everyone had affection for them both. Um, even when they knew they were immigrants and refugees, they really had affection for them. It, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, uh, that's, you know, that, the horrible media stuff you get. It was lovely, affectionate people. And people said to me, you're the poet, you've got to write their story. And I, but what I found was everybody wanted to make up the story themselves. I said, what I want to do is write their love song. Because whatever they've come through, and if you take the DNA sample, they are, they are the produce of more than one country, I tell you. Whatever they've been through, whatever the gaps between their dreams and reality, they've loved each other. So they kind of represent all of us. Most of us can relate to being made of flotsam and jetsam. <laughs> Take that as a yes. <laughs> You're made out of odds. I'm made out of ends. We're cast off bits and bobs, but we're more than just friends. We have so much in common, we both know how very odd it is to be composed of offcuts and extraneous commodities. Your various parts all add up to a wonderful sum. They're all fit for purpose, just not their original one. You're more than the sum of your parts. You know what a man wants. You stepped out of the sea like a Bond girl. But not all at once. <laughs> you're the woman I want. You're the man I adore. I'm so glad you washed up on my shore. I liked your beachcomb-backed hair and your broom-brush bristles. To kiss you was like being tickled with thistles. I like your fishnet fullness and your frontal bumps protuberance. Although they're made of plastic, they have a natural exuberance. When you come into view, I can't help but go for. I'm so glad you washed up on my shore. You're my Mr. Right, you're my Ms. Even Writer. My high tide, high five, you're my love at first sighter. You're more, I adore you. You're my Mr. Rightest. You're made of debris, and I'm made of detritus. <laughs> Our parts may wear out, but our love will endure. I'm so glad you washed up on my shore. You're winningly winsome, you're handsome, and then some. Are there finer men out there? Because I've never met them. You can keep your fine fellows from Topsham and Epsom. I prefer my men from Flotsam and Jetsam. <laughs> You've the coastal charisma that I can't ignore, and I'll say it again as I've said it before, at the risk of appearing a terrible bore. I'm so glad you washed up on my shore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you later.